The DJI Mini 2 has undoubtedly been the best sub 250 gram mini drone your money can buy. Now there has been others out there that offered more features, but the Mini 2 remains to be the most versatile and reliable and therefore it continues to be the most popular of all the mini drones. Well, at least until the Mini 3 comes out. So today, I'm gonna to share with you 12 ways to level up your Mini 2 videos, including the settings and the maneuvers I use to get the best out of this little drone. And to top it off, I'm gonna show you how I edit it. Chad here, and I'm here in Northern Virginia, right off the Potomac River. And here is where I'm gonna share with you 12 ways to improve your Mini 2 videos. We all know the Mini 2 is a cinematic beast, and you know that you can get some epic footage from that little camera. So these 12 tips are gonna be broken down into three different categories. First, we're gonna go over the settings, and then we're gonna go over uh, suggestions on how to capture your footage. And then lastly, we're gonna get into the editing part of it. So over time, I found that these 12 tips are vital to getting the best footage out of your Mini 2 or any drone in that matter. So I hope you stick around to the end. But before we get started, if you like drone reviews, tips, tricks, tutorials, and cinematic videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. There is a red button right down below that you can click on right alongside a notification bell that you can also click so you know the next time I post a video. With that said, let's get started. film in the highest resolution possible and the Mini 2 offers 4k at 30 frames per second although the frame rate is user preference by using 4k resolution guarantees that you get the best quality image and it also leaves a little bit of wiggle room in post just in case you want to crop in without degrading the image and even if your end product will be presented in 2.7k or 1080p Shooting in 4K will deliver a higher quality downsampling image. Whether you're using pro mode or automatic mode, it is important that you get an even exposure and lock it in so it doesn't change while you're flying about in your environment or when you're moving the gimbal up and down. And I highly suggest using pro mode because you do have more control over the individual settings. And also if you wanna to check to make sure you have an even exposure, just check down in the right hand corner next to the MM, which stands for meter manual. That is the number that indicates that you do have an even exposure if it reads zero, zero. Now my preference is to go underexposed just slightly at negative 0.3 or negative 0.7. This is because the DJI Mini 2 tends to overexpose its midtones just slightly. So I like to make those adjustments in post if I need to. To get an even exposure, your camera uses ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Now since the Mini 2 has a fixed aperture, that leaves the ISO and shutter speed for you to adjust. Your ISO should remain at the lowest setting, which is 100, to reduce the appearance of noise or graininess in your image. And your shutter speed is something that you need to pay close attention to. Your shutter speed will have a noticeable effect on the look of your video, especially when it comes to motion. A fast shutter speed such as 1 400th of a second will produce crisp frames that have a choppy look when played back. On the other hand, a slow shutter speed such as 1 50th of a second produces a series of blurred frames that look smoother when played back. This is what we call natural motion blur. Now this is what we see in the movies and this is actually what our eyes are more accustomed to. So say you are filming in 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be set to 1 50th of a second. And if you're filming in 30 frames per second, your shutter speed should be set to 1 60th of a second. Now these settings don't have to be exact. If you need to adjust your shutter speed to get a more even exposure, that will be fine. 
as long as it's close enough to the uh, 180 degree shutter rule. And also motion blur is not too important when you're flying 200 to 400 feet in the air because you do not notice it. However, you do notice it more when you're flying closer to objects. As we know, the Mini 2 has a fixed aperture. And because of that, we're gonna need indie filters to set the proper shutter speed during daylight hours. Now indie filters are just dark pieces of glass that reduces the amount of light that enters through the lens and onto the sensor, which allows you to slow down that shutter speed to get that smooth motion blur. Now this is something the aperture could do, but like I mentioned, the Mini 2 has a fixed aperture, so we need to use indie filters. I've done several videos on indie filters, so I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go ahead and check those out. And one last thing with the settings, your white balance. Manually setting your white balance is a must when filming cinematic footage. If your white balance is set to automatic, every time you move around about in your environment or move the gimbal up and down, you'll get a color shift or a temperature shift in your footage. And that's a big no-no. So set your white balance to manual and leave it in manual. And if you're unsure to what you set your white balance to, just switch it to auto and let the camera automatically set the temperature and then switch it back to manual. And this will lock in the white balance at what the camera set. My setting preference is usually between 5300 and 5700 during the day and around 45 to 4800 at night. All right, guys, before we move on, if you are liking this video and or uh, enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up. This does help you to push it out to more people who are searching for content just like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, another good way to improve your shots is to plan your shots. I know most of us, when we arrive at the location, we just put the drone up and fly around aimlessly looking for shots. But instead, try arriving at your location and taking a step back and soaking it all in and taking a look at points of interest you'll be interested in filming. Now, I understand that this is not always possible and you may be in a run gun situation, but if you know that you're going out to film, having a plan will make things much easier and will save you time and battery. Also, one more thing I want to add, you can also use Google Maps to scout out your area before you even leave the house. You can use the 3D satellite view or street view to uh, look around for points of interest you'll be interested in filming. When you are capturing footage, it is very important that you get smooth movements. If your footage is anything but smooth, it looks very unprofessional and could be distracting to your audience. By switching your drone to cinematic mode and adjusting the gimbal settings will help in getting the smoothest movements. So when you finally press record, it'll take a second to get into a smooth movement. And then once you get that rhythm, just hold it there for eight to 10 seconds to give you enough footage to put onto your timeline. So the whole objective is to keep your audience interested. Your typical forward, backward, and rotational shots are all good, but they can become a little bit repetitive. So using your angles and capturing shots from different perspectives will make your video just a little bit more interesting. So you wanna make sure you get a variety of shots. And by doing that, you'll have a lot to choose from when editing and post. So instead of doing your typical orbit, try doing an orbit with a forward push. So say for instance, if you wanna rotate right around your subject, you will have to push your right stick up into the right and then your left stick left, all while keeping your subject center frame and rotating the gimbal downward. This move makes it appear as if you're diving in or zooming in on your point of interest. Another one of my favorite moves is a top down with a twist. This move just requires you to point your camera 90 degrees straight down 
while pulling your left stick down to the left or right or up to the left or right. This move is simple but effective. And here are a couple other ones. Now I've done a video on my top five drone moves with the DJI Mini 2. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to go ahead and check that out. But for now, let's move on to tip number eight. Now what I see a lot in videos are shots from way up high showing off the massive landscape. Now this is great for establishing shots, but what is there in that location? To get variety in your videos, you want to get that establishing shot, but you also want to get medium shots along with close proximity shots. The medium and close proximity shots give more insight to the location that you are filming and doesn't leave your audience wondering what's there. And another idea to show scale is put a subject in the frame. Either it be a person, a car, or a boat. Having a subject in your frame can help tell a story and show how big or small an area is. Okay, so we've gone over several tips on your settings and how to capture your footage. So let's head over to the lab and I'll share with you a few tips and recommendations on how to edit your video. All right, so let's go. All right, so this is the point where you start creating your masterpiece. And choosing the right music, in my opinion, is the most important part in putting this all together. Not only do you want to choose the right music, you want to make sure your edits fit that music. And also, take into account all the sections of the song that you choose. My process of choosing the right song either starts with Epidemic Sound or Artlist. These are two inexpensive, royalty-free music sites that you can get great music for your videos. This video is not sponsored by either of those companies, but I do like to share this type of information. So if you want to check them out, I'll leave links in the description below. So when you're searching for the right music, you want a song that tells your story or gives that mood that you're trying to convey to your audience. So when you're going through all your footage, you want to find clips that fit specific parts of your song, such as your intro, your chorus, or your climax. You also want to take into account the slow and fast parts of the song and find clips that fit those parts as well. So as a suggestion, and this is something that I do for myself, try choosing your music before you even go out and shoot. By doing so, you will already know where the important parts of the song are and will already know what kind of shots you want to get based on the music that you chose. This kind of takes you back to the planning stage. It'll save you time, but can also save you the frustration of piecing together everything after the fact. So like I said, this is a suggestion, and if you end up using this technique, leave a comment down below and let me know how it turned out. So my editor of choice is Final Cut Pro, and the first thing I do is lay down my music track and mark off the beats so I'll know where to make my cuts. And then I'll go through my library of clips and choose a clip that fits this particular part of the song. So when you're trimming your clips and making your cuts, you want to cut out any jerky movements and add the smoothest part of your footage to your timeline. And if there's any small bumps or nudges in between, you can iron those out by using the built-in stabilizer inside Final Cut Pro. So the intro to this particular song starts out slow and has a dreamy feel to it. So I use this clip here, which started out as a close proximity shot, then opened up into a medium shot. Adding sound and visual effects to your video will make it more engaging to your audience. It will make your video more immersive, help tell your story, and move your storyline along. As far as the sound design, I get my sound effects from either Epidemic Sound or Artlist. However, Final Cut Pro does come with a library of sound effects that are pretty good. Adding sound design is understated and can be overlooked in some cases, but by adding it, it does make your video a little bit more cinematic. Now here are all the sound effects I added to this video. So I added individual sound effects to the majority of my clips 
It gave it a little bit more accent and made it more engaging to my audience. Now I know it'll take a little bit more time to search for these sound effects and add them to your video, but it will pay off in the end. So this is what it sounds like with just these sound effects added. Now, as far as the visual effects, I like to add a speed ramp to some of my clips just to speed things up and to change up the pace of the video. In some cases, the clip may be perfect for a particular section of the song. However, it may be a little bit too long, so I'll add a speed ramp to it just to shorten it up and make it fit. And sometimes I may add motion blur to my speed ramp to smooth it out and make it less digital looking. All right, so now we're down to adding the final touches to your video. And by adding a slight color grade, we'll give it a little pop and make it stand out from other videos. Now the Mini 2 in particular records in 4K up to 100 megabits per second. So what that means, you have a lot of information in there to do a slight color grade. Now you won't have as much dynamic range in your footage as if you were filming in a log color profile, but you will be able to make minor adjustments to the exposure and add a look or a LUT made specifically for regular footage. So what I like to do is work with adjustment layers and add a base layer to each individual clip then add a overall look to it by using a second adjustment layer. Now, after all the effort we put in this with the settings, capturing our footage, and the editing, this is what we get. So I have been going on for a little while now, and if you want to see the rest of my cinematic video, you can go ahead and check it out right here. And also, as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for future content. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. You feel alive, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return of the Mac, the king is back though. Covid and cash.